Hey friends, this is Quest and Current talking and today I wanted to show you what electronically marked or e-marked cables actually can do and what they are supposed to be used with. These are two USB-C cables. One of them is a USB-4 cable, uh, the right one, and this one is a USB 3.2 cable. With both of them we can actually see that we cannot see a lot, so both of them are not actually marked in any way, even though this cable has a label that uh, says a lot of stuff. It actually does not tell us uh, what kind of voltages or current the cable can do, what kind of data transmission speeds are possible, or what the cable itself uh, is rated for generally. Similar with this kind of cable, even though there is a small marking um, down on the connector here that says 240 watts. I'm not sure if you can even read that. Mm, maybe now, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe not. So. If you have one of those and you actually want to use them and you've thrown away the packaging because that's what you normally do once you unpack uh, a cable, you don't actually know if this cable can, for example, ch charge your laptop, if this cable can be used with your external hard drive, if you can charge your phone with it, if your earplugs charge or your flashlight or whatever you have. So that's what you need a USB cable tester for so we can actually know what the electronically marked chip inside says and what can be what it can be used with. This is a BLE CableQ prototype and we're going to use it to extract all the data uh, that's available inside the cables. The data that's, that's available uh, is going to be saved on an integrated circuit that is integrated um, inside this, this plastic shell of the connector itself. It's going to be either one or two of them depending on the manufacturer and, and the way they, they've implemented that. And this um, IC can actually talk to the cable tester once we've plugged it in and tell the cable tester what kind of cable it is, what length it is approximately, what kind of currents and voltages it can do. Um, it can actually tell it what manufacturer it came from and what hardware and software revision it, it can do and some more infos depending on the generation of the cable. But now that I've talked about it a lot, um, let's plug it in and see. So, if we just plug it in and take a look at the results, we can see that the cable itself uh, can support speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second, that's USB 4 speeds, um, and can charge up to 250 watts. And the cable health itself is, is going to be 100% because we've just um, taken it out of the box. So, if we take a closer look at the specs, we can see that the cable itself can not only support USB 4 speeds, but it's also backwards compatible. This is good in a way because not all devices that we have, or at least I have at home, support USB 4. So even though um, some devices only use USB 2 in, in my household, this cable can still be used. Um, and if you want to do something special, it can also support the debug accessory mode. To be able to be rated or used at the 250 watts, um, it needs to be able to support currents after 5 amp, di amp. This means it can also support currents less, uh, as well as the voltages of up to 48 volts um, compared to the nominal 5 volts USB voltage. If we take a look at the USB connector, this is the connector itself, the USB-C connector, as if you were looking at it from the front, you can see that uh, almost all of the pins are connected, only two are not connected, and these are the D plus and D minus pins. This is due to backwards compatibility because uh, those two are going to be connected on the bottom row here. And this means that you can easily make an adapter from USB-C to USB-A or to micro USB without uh, actually having to think about uh, where those two pins come out. So all of those connectors are going to be rated at USB-C speeds um, exactly for this reason. If we take a look at the details, we can see what kind of USB pins are connected, what, what kind of available USB options are, and what the actual uh, cable resistance from point A to point B is going to be, or was measured at uh, practically. Now, to come to the e-marker, and that's where the interesting part lies in, the e-marker itself told us that it is a passive cable, so there is no active um, electronics to drive the data from point A to point B. It did not tell us what kind of vendor it came from, interestingly enough, but it tell, did tell us that it can support voltages up to 50 volts and currents up to 5 amps. And the cable itself is a USB 4 Gen 3 cable with a latency of smaller than 10 nanoseconds, which means that it's approximately one meter or less. Um, again, there is no hardware or software revision uh, that the vendor itself 
did tell us, but it sent the, the correct vendor defined message and the vendor defined message ID that comes with it. Now that we know what we can use this cable for and uh, that we can, for example, charge our laptop with it, we are going to take a look at the other cable, the red one, that even though there's a label that says nothing, we know that it's going to be a bit, bit different and we can use it for different kind of things. So again, connecting it and taking a look, we can see that this cable is now rated at half the data speed. It's not 40 gigabits, it's a 20 gigabits per second um, ca cable, which means that it's basically a USB 3.2 cable and it can uh, use, be used as a device for charging up to 100 watts, which means that more powerful laptops, more powerful devices, displays cannot be used with this cable. Again, the cable health is going to be 100% because it's brand new. And if we take a look at the specs, then we can see um, it's not a USB 4 cable, but it's a USB 3.1 cable, okay? And it can, again, be used for backwards compatibility with the debug accessory mode as well. So now, why is it only rated at 100 watts? That's because even though it can, again, support up to 5 amps of current, it can only support voltages up to 20 volts. So the 28, 36, and uh, 48 volts extended power range is not possible with this cable. If we take a look at the USB connector again, uh, basically all of the pins are connected. Just the two um, D plus and D minus pins are connected only once, as is correct with the specification of the USB um, interest foundation. So if we go back up and into the details, then we again see what kind of resistance the cable has. And what the e-marker itself told us, it told us that it is actually a USB 3.2 cable or USB 4 Gen 2, but I know that it's a USB 3.2 cable um, with less than um, one meter of length. So it is pretty much exactly one meter. And it can now handle voltages up to 20 volts with currents up to five amps with the vendor ID being empty. Um, this cable obviously is hardware revision one. So there also is uh, obviously uh, revision zero uh, floating around and again there's a when defined message and a when defined ID that came along with the cable. With this information we now know both of them are actually electronically marked, both of them have e-markers inside, both of them can be used for different applications and purposes and you actually have to know what you want to use it for and even though both of them are in perfect working condition you cannot swap them out um, independently if you don't know what you're actually wanting to do with them. If you have any questions about the eMark, about the cables, or about the connectors, don't hesitate to ask and just put them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.